Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Uh, in this time I will show you how you can um, display a, a light, LiDAR point clouds using an online uh, open source software. Uh, it's a very easy way to uh, create rapid visualizations and very simple analysis. So the name of the software is plus.io with no word is plus. Um, it you can find it in GitHub as well. So if you go to GitHub, you will find all the repository uh, with all the information. Um, and also you can clone it, download it um, of this website. Um, it's very useful. It uh, was developed by the MIT um, and it's free of license. So um, I, I want to, I, I will really try different um, softwares available there, but this is a very easy one to use. So I will show you how to display things and how to do and, con um, and perform very simple analysis for your light and point cloud. So for those who uh, is really important and don't know about um, what is LiDAR, LiDAR means light and de light detention and ranging. It's basically um, information, um, point clouds or points that have an X and Y and Z value and are geolocated and these were collected with a terrestrial laser scanner or area laser scanner. And depending on the quality and accuracy of the device or the sensor um, that was used to collect this data, um, you will have much higher resolution and accuracy. So the density is basically the number of points that you have per square meter or cubic meter, okay? So the higher the density, the more precise, the more points you will have and the more complete it will look your model, the lower the density, the more gaps will be between the different points. So basically it's just, it's like water density, the same. The, the, how scattered they are the points, how clustered they are the points. So let's start with the default one, but if you want to have the full um, points, the point density of your dat data set, you just increase it a little bit, okay? So you start first choosing data to displays. I have already here some uh, uh, last files. Last is the um, one of the most common uh, formats of uh, point clouds. So I would choose this one. Um, just a little bit of the background or this data set. This data set was uh, corresponds to an, a coastal area. So this is the coastline what you see here on the left side. And these areas are uh, agricultural areas surrounded by also urban settlements. And in the middle is this uh, huge area called the wash pool, which is um, a natural retention basin for stormwater. Okay, this is located in the city of Oncaparinga. Now, some quick um, uh, tips for visualizing or rotating or playing with the visualization or the display or the canvas. So this works basically, uh, your pointer works exactly like um, um, a string that is pulling up and down the model. So if you want to bring that corner down, just simply have to work with the pointer. If you want to rotate it, you just have to drag and rotate. And you will see that you have this problem that it's tilted. The only thing you have to do is just to pull your model from the corner that you want to bring down. Okay, so, and use, you can use that only the, um, by pressing your left button in the, in the mouse. By pressing the right button of the mouse, what you're gonna do is just drag your model. Okay, and if you want to zoom in or out, you just have to use the uh, scroll of your mouse. Okay, those are the basic visualization tips. Um, for some people, it may be a little bit complicated, but after a while, you will get used to them. Now, let's go to the next uh, tab. Um, it's just information of your data. Here, uh, 1.8 million points. Uh, from those 1.8 millions, I just loaded 900,000 to make it faster, the visualization, okay? And you have other information here, like the version or the compression. Uh, LA set, uh, files with that extension and LA set are, are just compressed last point clouds. Okay, now we're going to get back to this later, but it's really important to define this. Um, the type of um, um, units you are going to use to measure, I'm using meters. 
okay and you have here the different types of cameras so you go we are already in perspective you have orthographic if you want to create an axonometric view that's why we use orthographic then we have the top view let's go back to uh, perspective you can reset the view you can rotate again um, your model and you can visualize it with any angle perfect the field of view is the next setting you can modify the field of view basically is how your perspective will be or the level of deformation of your perspective so the more the high the larger it is the more you will see the higher the value of the field of view the more you will see in your scene but uh, the more deformation it will have on the edges the smaller it is this value the more uh, parallel they will the, these two lines will become so there is a less effect of a third point of perspective it just simply reduces the deformation of the perspective okay and that uh, is only available in perspective as you can see now we're going to the next step or the next information which is the data measurements how you measure this data um, you can only measure it in perspective and you can create points by double clicking on top of a point you will see this sphere appearing and then you can click on the other point and you will have here the measurement so it's nearly one point one kilometer of length you can reset and then let's do something else let's find a point in the middle let's find a point here you can add more points and you can get the different lengths okay let's do it again let's start in the middle let's create this line now if you click on this icon this little icon you're going to create a region a clipping region okay and this clipping region it appears here at the bottom you can toggle so you can go to the full view, full view or just to the region okay let's go on now to this region this allows you to create a section or a portion of the whole data set and just to analyze it so you want to analyze perhaps the topography okay now you got here and you can change uh, the methods for creating this uh, visualization and also you can change the width of your port of your selection or your region you can also change the height of that region so they are you can see at the bottom how the region is being modified okay then if you want to uh, perform another measurement you can do it if not you can deactivate but you can still see the measure the the region defined so you just have to close it and then everything will be as at the beginning then let's go to the particle size these particles are not like the typical visualizations in which you have a sphere or um, uh, in a volumetric sphere or a round um, that's why it's so fast to display this data set which are so many points because it's fast because it's using an OpenGL environment but also because the particles are represented like a planes that are perpendicular to the view so as you can see is a square plane um, so it's not a particle or a sphere so it's it's much faster the visualization process uh, a good suggestion is like you can start seeing the noise the the closer you are to the surface the larger you need to make this plane or particle size the farther you are you can reduce it uh, this is up to this point is okay um, why the particle size will start overlapping to each other so if you get closer you will see more gaps in between um, so you have to increase the particle size in order to fill those gaps um, so that's the logic behind this um, but usually we want to display the whole model now we go to the colorization tab um, we don't have RGBs if you use um, terrestrial laser scanner also aerial laser scanner with orthographic or um, ortho um, corrected photographs you may be able to display the RGB but this data set that I have it doesn't have the RGB um, Faro, Rigo, or Leica, all the sort of um, scanners, terrestrial laser scanners, um, they take the photograph and uh, you, they assign automatically the RGB value to each of these points. What we have is the classification, and we can show the classification and choose a color wrap. But right away, you cannot see that visualization, and that happens because it is the intensity, the source that is being visualized. So you can change to high map or inverted or normal grayscale but let's keep it with intensity but still you cannot see anything why because there is a blending mode here you have to reduce the blending mode here or increase it 
as you can see here. Okay, and then you can create different or you can use different methods of visualization. So let's reduce it. You can see purple the ground and colored all the vegetation and greenery. Intensity represents the intensity of the source. Each, uh, at the moment, the scanner did, uh, did the data collection. The intensity of the source corresponds to the intensity of the part of the ground or the, or the greenery or building uh, that is bounced back to the sensor. So the sensor can identify what type of surface um, the signal has hit. It. So that's the basic idea of the intensity. And we also have intensity scaling, and this can help us to create a more contrast. This is high contrast, less contrast, and this is the full range. I wanted to have it a little bit lighter and with a little bit more of contrast. That's enough. And so we have this model. Okay, that's a good way of showing things. Um, um, now we reach the point of, um, I think I described most of the tools, but the last one is inundation. So when we enable this, what it's creating, it's creating a, a parallel or a flat uh, plane that can be manipulated using the sliders here. So this is the opacity of the plane. Let's make it less opaque. And then let's increase the height slowly. So because this is um, a coastal area, it will help you to visualize how this inundation occurs in the, in the coastal area, OK? But here is we need to use this tool with caution. This inundation or flooding tool is not a precise tool in which it considers many other factors that are really important in the process of uh, or in a flooding. This tool is only using or considering the topography. But there are a lot of other factors that are missed out or neglected because it's, very, it's a very simple uh, tool or for visualizing or for identifying areas that may be affected by flooding or sea level rise in this case. This doesn't consider geological conditions or uh, different type of soils, uh, the level of erosion or the barriers like, uh, for example, the location of greenery or physical barriers like um, uh, con um, walls or uh, buildings. And it also doesn't consider um, the different um, let's say, erosive processes that occur when there is a massive flooding or a flash flooding, OK? So we just use it with caution. When we increase it here, the height, we can see the progression. How is this inundation happening? But put attention to this. When we change the angle of the perspective, the areas that are appear to be underwater change in some cases. And why does this happen? This is happening because there are gaps in between these points and what you are seeing here is the is the color between the gaps. So the best method to visualize this to be a bit more precise is just to use the top view because in the top view you will have the plane uh, orthogonal or parallel to to the view. And so you're not going to have this issue. And then you can zoom in and out or change the angle. So you will have a more precise, let's say, um, view of this inundation map. Now, if you want to um, animate this, simply you can use a screen video recorder, exactly like the one I'm using to make this video. Or you can also import the screen captures to, um, let's say, another um, software like Photoshop. So how we can do that? So let's imagine, let's change this to the beginning of the in, uh, flooding. You see that the water is flowing through this little creek and then going into this basin. So let's smoothly work on it. This is the first stage. So we, you, we can use the snip tool, we create a new snipping tool, a snip, um, sorry. Um, Let's just be careful about defining the boundaries. This is our boundary. Good. We can go to the Photoshop file, uh, create a new one, and we use the clipboard, and then we just paste. OK? Then we can go back again to the tool, and then we use again, um, we just modify this slightly, and this is the next stage. We just create another 
sneak. Just be cautious about the boundaries of those snips. Then we go here and again we paste it. So we can use that corner to be sure that everything aligns properly. Then we go again to this and we create a third stage or a bit more dramatic. Let's go there. And we can create another snip of that. We go to the Photoshop, we paste it, and so this is what we what we got. So we have a progressive increment of the water that is floating on this area. Okay, we can animate this creating a GIF, GIF file, okay, a GIF file, or we just can simply scale them and put them one next to each other. Uh, we just scale, we just use Control T, scale, and then we just scale them to this corner. Let's imagine there, and uh, then we go to the layer two, Control T, scale. And we just move it there, and, uh, and then we'll go to the last layer, Ctrl T, scale. And just go there. You can be more precise. And we just crop the whole thing at the end. So we have a time series analysis of the, this progressive inundation or progressive flooding in a particular area. Just be careful with the resolution, enter, and that's it. So just to show quickly how we can show these stages. Okay, um, now what we can do, um, I wanted to show finally is like, this is the, let's go back to our perspective. So in the perspective look, the angle will be varied with something we don't have when we have the top view. I just want to quickly introduce the real, um, more precise tools to estimate um, inundation or flooding. Are there are other? There are many, many simulation tools, but two uh, I they came across um, to me uh, very recently. One is the Caesar Least Flood. It's just a model. It's an evolution model that simulates erosion, the position. So it considers more factors and is a much more comprehensive method of analysis. The other is Hale Caesar. So what it means Caesar, but this is a funny name, but the Caesar means the cellular automaton uh, evolution, is here the name, cellular automaton evolutionary slope and river model. And the hail is just simply, um, is the high performance architecture, hydrological and erosion model, okay? So that's what it means. You, um, these are subject of other uh, videos that maybe in future I will show. Now, if you want to display another um, another um, point cloud, you just have to go to the browser and let's check this, for example, um, this one that is a bit more dramatic. And you will see that the inundation is still on. So let's disable it. And so the settings of the previous, of the previous, um, visualization are still there, but you can see here um, intensity range is too, too large. So let's go there and you can see that this topo topography is a bit more dramatic and so we can create again the inundation and you will understand here. You understand here um, the logic is very simple. It's just a plane that is moving. So there are many other factors that will depend and like, for example, the location of this vegetation or the type of soil. So you need to be very careful when using this tool, but it's so far useful because you will see how the water will, um, will go up, will increase in height. And other things that you need to consider is that the water will continue flowing down downward. So it may not happen this in particular for this location, but it helps you to animate or understand the topography a bit more. So I hope this uh, video is helpful for, for all of you, special landscape architects. And so we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.